Yum, yum. Craig here from Pixel Fondue. This tutorial is going to cover the process to create these sort of spiral graph uh, abstract images or designs, which are eh, they're pretty fun. They're pretty cool to play around with. And you can These are pretty high res. So you can get in there and take a look at how much detail there is. And uh, yeah, so things like this, or this, or this one, or this one. Again, push in a little bit. You can see there's quite a bit of detail in there. Um, push back out. Yeah, that one's pretty crazy. And that one's kind of ugly. <laughs> uh, there's a gold one, and you can kind of see the cool detail, these little filigrees there on uh, that, that close up. That one kind of looks like an eye, maybe. Uh, yeah, snowflake. Fatter snowflake. Anyway, so yeah, there, that one's kind of neat. So there's a whole bunch of this stuff. Um, these are rendered in Octane and V-Ray and, uh, and Moto, kind of all three of them. Uh, there's another one. So let's push out a little bit there, this one and that one. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. And they're really, they're really easy to set up. And once you get it set up, you can like just iterate into countless, just like literally countless different variations really easily. So that's what we're going to play with. So let me pop over to Moto. All right, here we are back in Moto, and the first thing I'll do is I'll just walk through this scene so you get the general idea of how this, uh, you know, set of uh, procedures works, and then we can do one from scratch. So I've got a red cube on a plane, pretty simple scene, and this little guy right here, it looks like an area light, but it's actually a linear force, and this forcing is going to shoot the cube up kind of this direction, and it's a little dynamic simulation on the cube, essentially. So it shoots up, and the plane is a, a, a collision surface. And there's a little bit of a gravity going on and also some sort of a initial velocity on the cube to give it some some spin. But that's it. I'm just getting some sort of interesting animation on a primitive. That's all I'm doing. And there it is. What's cool is this basic animation right here, this basic simulation with this particular shape can form the initial bounding or building block of the entire design. And what you'll do next, and there's really two ways to do it. You can use Moto's built-in features, the uh, arrays, which I think were introduced in Moto like 12 or 13, and create curves off of those vertices. So if I turn that on here, you'll see the set of uh, this really kind of cool looking design here. What it's doing is it's just taking a look at every single vertice, all eight of these vertices in this cube. And I'll just highlight them here. Um, whoops, let me grab the cube. Um, and it's recording their position on every single frame. So as I, as I push, as I go sort of frame by frame through here, you know, it's going to record the positions of those vertices in every single frame, and then it's going to draw a curve connecting all those positions. And that's how you get this sort of cool shape here. And we can use that, but we can also use, um, for a few more options, we can use a kit uh, called TracerX, which I really, really like. And this is by uh, Mario Baldi. It's like 35 bucks, 35 potatoes. I totally recommend getting it because it's not just tracing uh, vertices and particles. It's got a, just a ton of other mesh ops in there. So if I'm using tracer X instead of arrays to curves, I'm gonna have a few more options. I'm just gonna hide my plane here and turn on my um, tracer X mesh. And so this is, again, it's tracing the location of all these points. The way it connects the dots, so to speak, is different than the arrays to curve uh, mesh operation or, or nodes, I suppose that we're using in, in this example or the previous one. So there's Moto's built-in arrays to curve. And here's um, uh, uh, Tracer X. But you have a few more options in Tracer X. I'm just turn on vertices so and kind of see these guys. So I can look at my uh, Tracer X mesh op here. And you know I've, I can you know up the sampling so I can get more vertices or I can lower the sampling for less fine. Uh, curves. I can change from you know B splines to curves to polylines. I can do some more stuff here with it. So it's it, there's a lot you can do. It's a really um, it's really pretty cool uh, plugin. One of the really cool things is I can adjust the lifespan. So if I'm I'm just going to channel haul this by pressing C. If I adjust the lifespan, I can have more or fewer you know vertices there from the you know more or fewer previous frames. So, you know, I can sort of adjust the, again, the, the shape of the design I'm dealing with here. So we'll just turn this back up to like uh, 75 or so. And there you can kind of see how that works. And then, then it sort of trails off like that as time keeps ticking. So it's a really cool effect. 
And then if I just keep on marching forward, I've got my you know, design there like this. And I'm going to hide my cube at this point. And then what I can do is I can merge these curves into a new mesh. And let me just turn off a few things. So this is these are the curves merged into a new mesh. But then I can go in and make a radial array of those curves. Now you can kind of see what's happening, right? So here's my radial array. I can look at my helix generator here. And maybe um, you know I can do you know just a few, or I can do quite a few different uh, accounts there on it. And so you know then I'm just going to again sort of add complexity to this initial shape here. I could do that by adding a mirror operation and mirroring on um, the Y there. So now it's sort of uh, looks like sort of like a galaxy. And I can also add some noise, and this noise displacement X is uh, it's another mesh operation that comes with Tracer X, and it you know again it just it adds noise, and you can also add a fall off here. So if I you know look at my uh, uh, fall off here, this radial fall off, or radial fall off two I suppose right here, you can see where you know the, all this sort of curviness from the noise, and if I make this fall off smaller, you can see that it uh, may only affect the noise inside the radius of that. So curvy on the inside and not curvy on the outside. So again, I'm just adding complexity to, the, complexity to the shape. And so there it is right there. And then I can just kind of keep going. And again, remember, because Tracer X has that um, lifespan there, if I just change you know, the time slider, I'm going to get different frames from the animation. So here I'm sort of opening up like an iris in the middle. Let me just hide my uh, locators there. And so there's just, again, a, there's a lot I can do with, uh, with the shape just by changing the frames or changing the ro uh, repetitions, things like that. And then I'm going to take it one step farther, and I'm actually going to do use a particle generator. And I'm going to set this uh, to radial. So I'm going to do another radial duplication, basically, and feed that into a replicator. So let me hide my, you know, using this merged clone one as source. So it's, now it's sort of a radial array times two. And you can really see like a massive amount of complexity in here. So I turn this particle generator down to like four. And let's just go back to one, right? So I go to <clears throat> go to one. It's just that original shape, like the one with the mesh operations, a radial array. But I could just spin more and more onto that, so I can increase it quite a bit. I can also um, adjust the radius. So if I want to change the shape some more, I can up the radius like that and get sort of a cool donut-looking shape there. And then you know you can do, again you can just you can just rinse and repeat. I can then you know mesh merge this into another empty mesh and maybe do some deformations on it and then you know replicate it again. But you kind of see where I'm going here. We got some pretty you know kind of cool shapes. So if I just move the camera, let's just move it um, straight above it, like so. Maybe push in. So we have these shapes here. And then the last thing you want to do is is you want to make sure that um, our shape that's being replicated here. Uh, that you have over on the curves tab, you have render curves on, and then you may want to mess with the radius gradient. Here I've you know narrowed the curves at the beginning and the end, so they kind of have a sharp uh, beginning and end, and aren't, aren't just you know straight up tubes. And then yeah, you can render it out. So we'll see what this guy looks like. Uh, we'll just do this one in. Um, we'll do this one in V-Ray. Renders a little faster. And I'll hide my. Uh, Mesh operations window there. Just sort of push out a little bit. Yeah, there you go. So there's our <laughs> little design. And of course, if you go in and start messing around with, um, you know, depth of field and things like that, you can get even more to it. But again, like it's just it's just super just simple to change this up. So you know, initially, if you remember, let me just stop my little V-Ray animation or render going and push back. I'm going to hide the replicator. And I'm going to take a look at our um, merged and clone, right? Now remember, that came from the cube. Well, here's our initial cube, right? And here's our Tracer X tracing of it. But what if we use, instead of a cube, a cone? So here I've got a cone doing the same sort of dynamic animation as before. And if I go over to my Tracer X mesh and change its input from the cube to the cone, Toss this down here, source cube, I don't want cube, I'll get rid of that and I'll add my cone, cone dynamic. And now you see I've got a very different looking sort of um, array 
of curves coming off of that. And especially with this you know, point up here, that's so far away from these, it gives it a lot of sort of an interesting look there. And then I'll just go back through this. I've got my, you know, I've, I've got it merged and I've got it mirrored. So it's looking like this. And maybe I'll turn the mirror off this one and the noise displacement. And then I'll take a look at my replicator and, and uh, particle generator. And there it is there. I could sort of go through the animation a little bit and drag through it. And then here I may like one of these little sort of filigree looking edges here like this towards the end like that. Maybe something along these lines. Kind of feathery, kind of cool looking. Now hide my cone and uh, start my render up again. Sort of scooch this over. Now I've got something very different, right? And that's similar to what I did for this one here, right there. In fact, that's exactly what I did with this one to get this cool kind of shape there. Just uh, obviously added the gold material. Obviously I added a gold material to it. So that's the general idea in terms of um, getting, these, uh, getting these cool shapes. And there's just so many parameters you can change. You can change the uh, dynamic simulation. You can run a new simulation to get a different animation, which will give you different curves. You can change the shape from a cube to a cone to a torus to a snowflake or whatever and get different shapes. And you can also, um, you know, change the the mirroring and the radial arrays and, and all that stuff as well. And you, can, you don't have to do a, a radial replication of this. You can change the replicator particle generator to a, you know, a, an array or a linear uh, replicator as well, or linear generator as well. So I can sort of take this and scooch them up. It's probably a little bit hard to tell what's going on here, but refresh my uh, V-Ray scene. And you can start you know, getting some separation and some distance, which will play nicely into um, depth of field and things like that. But yeah, you can kind of sort of push in like this, maybe. Get some other sort of cool shots like this in here. So again, a lot you can do with it. Um, and I'll just go ahead and make a new one from scratch, just in case you want to follow along. And uh, we'll be done with it. Like before I do this, why don't I switch up my, we'll, we'll use our, um, let me just stop this. We'll use the uh, raise to curve in case you don't have Tracer X, just to see if you get an idea of what it might look like with a raise to curve. So. Here's a uh, here's our arrays to curves using that cube initially, and then again I could just go in and change um, go to my guy here and my merge mesh, just change it from the, the tracer X source to the uh, let me just remove that and add my um, array curves as the source and there we go so using those array curves and those actually give a really I'm not sure exactly how the array curves trace from point to point to get um, these curves uh, from the uh, animated cube, but it's it's a more complex looking shape than Tracer X, and it's pretty cool. So again, that's just uh, that's just the merge mesh with the singular array. But then if you want to go crazy and then you know make an array out of that one as well, you can go over here, let's do radial, push in. Yeah, so again, that's that's pretty <laughs> pretty cool looking. And maybe something, go to camera view, maybe something along you know, these lines or something like that. You can get a really cool looking um, animation in there or uh, image in there. You can also use the variation texture in the shader tree, obviously, to get slightly different um, colors to each of the curves. Again, just to make a uh, sort of a cooler looking image. But let's start from scratch and just make a all new one. You can follow along. All right, got a brand new scene, so let's make something interesting. I'm gonna fill up this empty mesh with a cube. And then I think I'm going to, let me just make a red here. And I'm gonna take a couple of a couple of these faces, I'm going to spiky them, just to give it you know, a more interesting shape. And so, you know, remember like these, as these vertices sort of twirl through the air, it'll leave a path behind it. So let's put some vertices away from the main body by, by doing a spiky. And then I'm going to hold uh, shift to give myself a plane. And then in polygon mode, I'm going to scale my plane. I'm going to make this um, you know, something that this can bounce off of. 
and I want to make these dynamic objects. So I'm going to go over here to the dynamics uh, tab here and let's make the, our red shape an active rigid body and the plane a static rigid body. And um, uh, yeah, multi hall. Maybe I'll just make this a mesh, uh, make this a mesh collision shape. And I might even just hit Shift T to triple these just for the heck of it. Um, and I'm going to move it in item mode. Make sure you're in item mode. So I'm going to move it just uh, above uh, the ground a little bit there. And yeah, so let's put a force in the scene. So I'm going to go over here to linear forces and fall off and hit um, and click that. And I've got a linear force. Make sure that locators are visible. Otherwise, you won't be able to see it. So make sure they're visible. And there's my linear force. And looking at the front here, I'm just going to move it down and kind of like this. So it'll sort of push this guy up. Now, you really need to crank the force up a lot for whatever reason, like that, you know, this is a pretty, this is like a meter long, a meter by meter, whatever cube. So it's actually kind of big and massive. So one of the things we can do is just lower the density to like 0.1, or we can also um, uh, up the, or in addition, we could up the strength of the uh, force here. I'm not really sure what torque strength does, but let's crank that up too. Maybe it'll give us something interesting. And I can just hit uh, play in the simulation here to see if it's doing anything I, I want. And it's all it's doing is falling to the ground, so I'm not getting enough force on that because this thing is so massive. So let's try 0.01 for density. See if that does anything. Okay, not much. Not getting much here from this guy. So let's just press C and crank these up some more. Okay, now we're <laughs> now it's starting to now it's starting to push it. Okay, let me just make this less even more less dense point oh three or something yeah dynamics is just continuously screwing screwing around with uh parameters until you get something you like artistically okay so that just shoves it off into infinity so what we really need to do is add a fall off in here so this force falls off after a little bit and so add a radio fall off and then i'll um, just you know shift click uh, the radius xyz click uh, press c for channel hall and drag that out a bit um, I'll even go to a little bit of a solid core so it gets the full strength from the beginning. And then once it leaves this radius, it should no longer be getting this force. Once I connect these up, so let me just grab both of these and add them to the schematic and make sure my uh, fall off is plugged into my linear force there. And when I do my animation, there it goes up pretty high and then falls. So maybe not, uh, maybe not so powerful here. So let me just knock these down a little bit. Play this again. Okay, pretty good. And so to get some spin, I'm actually going to select my uh, shape here and under dynamics, under torque impulse, we'll give it you know one newton under under x, maybe point or y and 0.5 under uh, x, and see if that gives us a little bit of a spin. And it does. Maybe not, maybe not enough though. So maybe like one and two. See how that how that does it. Okay, that's some decent amount of spinning. Uh, it kind of tumbles there. I like it. Looks good. Okay, so I'm going to click this uh, little green arrow farthest to the right, and that'll cache the animation. I could just kind of uh, scrub through it here. Now, let's, um, let's hide these forces here just to clean up our scene a little bit, and I'm going to delete the area light cause, or the distant light because we don't need it. And I don't need to see the plane anymore. I'll keep the shape visible. And so if we want to do, we'll keep the schematic open and I'll add this guy down here. If we want to add uh, some curves to this, I'll just um, go over here to uh, add and type in array. And what we want here is particles to array. So we'll go like that, particles to array. And we'll plug our mesh into the particle source. And now what this node is doing is you can kind of see the little numbers on there. It's going to, um, put the positions, you can basically grab a feature from these particles, and these are just vertices, so just the position is what I want. And the mode is set to single frame, but really what I want is all frames or multiple frames, and now you can see like it's creating a list of all these positions throughout all these frames, which is nice. Now we just need to connect all these positions into um, curves. And I believe it's called uh, create a polygon. So we'll just go up here and whoops, I can spell with one hand, create, create polygon. So this little node right here, I don't actually want it hooked up to the mesh. We want it hooked up to particles to array. So that's going to go into uh, the positions. 
And then we just need a, a new mesh, an empty mesh for the geometry. So I just pressed N to get a new mesh here. Let's just call this uh, main one our shape. Dynamic, we'll just call it that so we don't forget what that is. And then this new mesh we'll call array curves. Like so. And in our little create polygons, we want the mode set to fill. And instead of faces, we want uh, curves. And then we need to um, connect our our geometry here. So this is just, you know, this empty mesh is just a container for this geometry that's been created by this node. So let's hook it up. And there it is. So there's our weird looking shape dribbling around. And it creates this cool looking uh, shape there. And then we're just going to use this. Now we're going to just start doing some, you know, messing around with it and 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 creating some radial arrays and getting a cool sort of spiral graph shape from this guy. So I can hide my shape dynamic. And I'm going to press in for yet another um, empty container, another new mesh. We'll call this uh, merged and modified. And then I th I'll just hide my schematic there and we'll just add a, um, a mesh merge or whoops, not a material. A merge meshes and we'll merge in our arrays. We'll add our arrays and you don't necessarily have to merge them in. It's just um, I think it's nicer. It's kind of like pre-comping in After Effects. If you use that, it just gives us sort of a blank slate to start with. We can hide our arrays over here and we can just worry about this uh, mesh right here. And then again, if we ever want to, you know, change up our to a new shape or a new, new, you know, new animation, run a new simulation, we can just sort of keep keep the, keeping these steps separate. Is why I'm doing a merge mesh here, essentially. And so we got that. And then um, why don't we uh, mirror it on the Y? So we can get uh, kind of a cool looking shape there on the Y on the bottom part as well. So we'll just go to our tool pipe, mirror generator on the Y. So now we got this. And then let's do a radial array. So radial array, like so. Kind of see where we're going here. Um, you know, there's quite a few parameters on the array we can play with. So this helix generator. Um, can, oh, we can do the offset. This might be interesting. We just uh, click drag that. And you can see it's offsetting it in Y. So we get this sort of helix shape. This is kind of cool. I didn't really thought of that. Let's do that. I like that helix shape. Okay, and maybe maybe twenty. Um, let's just start with like a few, just so it speeds up a little bit here. So again, we can do offset. Whoops! Let me grab my helix generator. And uh, yeah, so I'm just I'm just pressing C for channel hall, getting my offset set there to something I like. And uh, again, you can do the starter end angle. You can animate all this stuff as well. Okay, it looks kind of cool. So I'll just do maybe 16 of these. Kind of cool looking. And then, you know what? Um, we'll just do that whole thing with the replicator now. So let's do add item, uh, replicator. And then our replicator, I'll just move it up to the top. We also want to add a um, particle generator like so. And this particle generator will set to uh, radial array. And the replicator for the uh, prototype, we're going to do this merged and modified. And I can hide that guy now. And for the replicator for the part point source, we'll use our particle generator. So there's that. And so here's our particle generator. And let me just go to maybe wireframe. Or let me see. What's going to be an easy way to see the little bit? Oh, that's, that's not so bad. Let's, um, I'm going to right click on our merge and modified and do shade, create item mask. And I'm going to make this a color that's a little bit uh, nicer to see, maybe like a, maybe I'll just make it kind of white actually. It's pretty, pretty damn dense. <laughs> I don't know if that's better. It may be worse. Okay, well, that's what it looks like. Pretty high up, negative 90, zero, zero. Push up like this. I can make the uh, canvas a square. Push up a little bit. And then let's take a look um, in, in maybe V-Ray. It's a little bit quicker to render this with uh, 
with GPU, just remember that your merged and modified one, the thing that's being replicated, you just want to make sure the curve rendering is on. So render curves, maybe, uh, I'm not sure how big this thing is, let's just do like 0.02 or so for the initial length, and then we'll go in and um, adjust it a little bit depending on what this looks like. Cancel there, let me just sort of push back. So I'm getting pretty thick curves, so I think I'm going to Kind of a cool looking shape. Almost looks like little feet or something. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make these a little bit thinner though. Like so. And then you can also adjust the uh, radius here. And so I'll just um, middle click to add some points. Scooch down, scooch down. In fact, I may actually turn off this replicator and just turn off our, turn on our uh, uh, merged one here just to get a better look at this one. It's kind of cool, actually. I might, might not even need the replicator to get a cool image out of this one. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, you can see the curves there, pretty thin. Might make them a little thicker. But it's so, or split the difference, but yeah, so detailed. And this one, I think you could probably get a cool look looking down on it. Let's compose this camera a little better. Like so, and then doing a, um, doing a little depth of field. And let's also just tur turn off our environment here. So, you know, the regular things apply. You can add some HDRs, some studio lighting HDRs for better lighting. Things like that. Here's our camera. Here's our focal distance. And then uh, maybe turn on some depth of field here. Like so. I can't remember if I want the f stop to be a big number or a little number. <laughs> I want it to be a little number. Maybe make it, uh, yeah, so you can kind of see what we're doing. These little stair steps getting blurry as it goes down farther, and I'll just let that render out um, in a sort of uh, much larger, let's do like 4K, and then, yeah, let that render out, then we'll take a look at it in Photoshop, and that's it. Maybe I'm gonna bump up the, uh, let me go back in, into the curve radius, actually. Make this quite a bit bigger, like that but just have it sort of meet in the middle, the radius, something along those lines. So you get really thin and really sort of thicker curves. That's kind of cool looking. Um, a little less shallow depth of field. And we can, uh, let's go with gold. Gold's always good. Let's uh, maybe I'll add a V-ray material in here and just make it metal. V-ray material, we'll just do like a gold reflection color, like so. And no Fresnel reflections, glossiness about 9, diffuse at 0, looking pretty shiny. And uh, IOR, crank that up. And let's just add a decent um, environment in here. Maybe something like, so weird. I made these for Moto <laughs> way back in like Moto 3 or so. That's how old these are. Most of these I made. I think this one came from SolidWorks. Uh, well, it's just, yeah, I don't want this visible to camera. But get some highlights in there. That particular one's always pretty hot, so maybe knock it down a little bit. Okay, so I'll let this render out, and then we'll look at it in Photoshop, and hopefully it looks cool since we went through all this trouble. And uh, yeah, that's making some spirograph kind of uh, images with dynamics and um, ready to curves. And of course, Tracer X is awesome. I'd try Tracer X if you can as well. And there it is all rendered out in its glory. Looks kind of neat. I don't know. I, I think I see 
honestly, it looks kind of like a whale or something. Like, you may all see a whale. Am I the only one that sees a whale in here? Can I kind of trace the whale? Let's see. Give me a, give me a, give me a color. Give me a color that stands out. This kind of looks like a whale. Here's like a fin, like that. Huh? A whale, maybe? Like that? I don't know. You tell me. Looks like a whale. <laughs> yum, yum!